Hello, it's Professor Hildebrandt here. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how we would calculate a percentage change. Um, this is actually something that, a tool that you might use in a lot of different applications, um, but it's going to be introduced in the McEachern text here in Chapter 5, and then we will talk about it a little bit more in Chapter 6, and then again in Chapter 7 um, when we talk more specifically about inflation. Um, but here in Chapter 5, uh, we're looking at, you could look at uh, different um, price indices. And so we want to see, you know, if the price index went from, let's say, 100 to 125, then what is the percentage change in price? What is our rate of inflation? Okay. So the formula that we're going to use here to calculate uh, our percent change, it's super technical. I'm kidding. It's not. We're going to take our new index, so the most current year we're looking at, subtract from that the index in the previous year that we're comparing to. We're going to divide by the previous year and then multiply by 100. Now keep in mind that the price index is always 100 in our base year. So if it's a base year calculation, it's really simple. These two 100s here would cancel each other out. So you can simply take the new index and subtract 100 from that. Um, but you have to use this formula when you're comparing two years that aren't the base year. So let's make this make more sense hopefully give you some real numbers here. So let's suppose 2015 is our base year, and so our price index is 100. And then the next year, in 2016, we're going to see that price index increase to 150. And then in 2017, it's going to go up again. It's going to go to 175. Okay, And so I want to calculate um, my the rate of inflation going here 2015 to 2016 and then here 2016 to 2017. Okay, so we'll start and we'll say, well, it is now 150 in 2016. Last year it was 100. We divide by last year's 100 and multiply by 100. Okay, so that's my setup for my formula. Now we need to just break this down. These 100s would cancel each other out and we're simply left with 150 minus 100, okay, or our final answer here would be 50%. Really cr crazy high, we'd, call it, we'd actually call this hyperinflation, okay, we'll talk about that more in chapter 7. All right, so this is different then from what we will see when we calculate 2016 to 2017. Math is a little bit more here, so now we're at 175, last year was 150, we're going to divide by that 150 and multiply times 100, okay? So 175 minus 150, and actually I'm going to get us a new screen here so we can see this clearer. 150 over 150 times 100, okay? I'm actually um, going to leave some stuff not broken down. You'll see why. So 175 minus 150 is 25. I'm going to leave this 150 hole and leave the 100 over here. The reason is that I'm going to think about this as um, quarters and dollars. So I'm going to think of this as 25 cents, and I'm going to think of this as a dollar fifty. And I know that there are six quarters in a dollar. So 25 goes into itself one time, and 25 goes into 150 six times. So now I just have 1 times 100, or 100, divided by 6. I could divide easily these each by 2 and have 50 over 3. And now I'm left with some pretty straightforward math, I think. And I would see that my rate of inflation was 16.67%. And we'll talk about this again more in... And I messed that up, my spelling there. Let's see if I can fix this. This is called disinflation. So we still had an increase in price, so we still had inflation, but our rate was lower than the rate of inflation the previous year. 